Hey guys, I'm Dov, and today I'm back with more Told War of Warhammer 2 multiplayer action. Today we're here with another community cast from Attic. This is going to be the High Elves versus the Vampire Coast, so let's get straight to it. We've got Teclis here, Handmaiden, and a Noble. A couple units of Bolt Throwers, some White Lions and Spearmen in the front. We've got a Tyrannoch Chariot way out wide, and lots of Reavers scattered around. A mix of Bow and Melee Reavers. As for the coast, we've got Harkon making his way forward now, two units of mortars, a couple of zombies as well. We've got some sirens here, a bloated corpse of fleet captain on foot with zombie summon inv invocation, a black spot as well. Yeah, a couple of fell bats, so pretty decent armies uh, overall. Harkon's going to make his way over here and start to uh, counterfire the bolt throwers. The mortars also firing in here. I do think this is a, maybe a bit of a mistake on the mortars part. They probably should be targeting the infantry here, but uh, Harkon also burns one of his breaths going after the Eagle Claw bolt thrower, which, you know, I get. But uh, you know, maybe he should actually be using his ammo like shooting at one of these characters, Just, you know, despite the fact they all can heal. I mean, taking out those bolt throwers is important, but oh man, the bloated corpse in the front line running in to disrupt the charge here just explodes those white lions, does a bunch of damage to them, and I mean, they're about double the cost, not quite, but uh, close to double the cost of the uh, the bloated corpse there, so that's actually not the worst trade in the world. Um, actually routed them off, so yeah, pretty decent. Both the mortars, though, uh, due to some mistakes here, do get caught out and, and destroyed by the reavers here. The zombie pole arms had come too far forward to support. Some zombie summons going to try and get in there, but again, the black spot, of course, being a uh, quote-unquote halberd unit with their bayonets will do just fine. Meanwhile, frontline engagement getting underway. White Lion's going to be cutting through these zombies pretty efficiently. Spearmen less so, but, you know, they'll take some time, but they'll get it done. And yeah, you can see here the two scurvy dogs in the back as well are going to be able to come forward in just a moment and finish off these artillery units. Even now, with all the, uh, the high elf infantry so far forward, they could probably come and do it now. But uh, yeah, bolt throwers, the few that remain getting effective damage on that black spot there. Reavers just kind of circling around. The, uh, the zombies are actually in a uh, position to properly defend that mortar, even though it is crumbling slowly. Uh, here, these reaver archers just kind of pouring in shots to wherever they can, obviously... They don't have too many great high-value targets to shoot at. Maybe they could shoot at the black spot, but beyond that, there aren't really too many targets for them to shoot at at the moment. But uh, Harkon's now using his ammo on the Handmaiden. Nope, looks like he's still targeting potentially the uh, bolt throwers, which we'll see. He may end up needing that ammo against some of these characters in the late game, but uh, it's anyone's guess at this point. Now the Hound's going to come out of the woods here and clean up these two tattered bolt throwers. That's why I think... Maybe using Harkon's ammo on the bolt throwers wasn't the greatest idea because he already had the tools to deal with them. That being said, it looks like uh, over here the Noble's been uh, taunted a little bit here by the uh, fleet captain. She's going to get in, get some okay attacks, but likewise she's taking a lot of damage as well. So uh, definitely some give and take there. Tyrannoch chariots have come through. They finished off the bats over on that side and are now coming, uh, running some rear charges here. But Teclis, Hornswaggle, and Power Siphon may get actually dived here. Yep, looks like Harkon's going to try and dive down and goon Teclis. Uh, gets, uh, mostly misses that attack animation. Doesn't look like he actually got got a decent attack in there. But the Tyrannoch chariot's actually going to now come in and kind of keep him pinned in. Let Teclis escape there so the Hornswaggle, you know, doesn't get any value from that. Likewise, uh, Reaver Archers also firing in. Upgraded Invocation. Going to try and keep these troops fighting here. Fleet Captain and Harkon himself, of course. Looks like we've also got a, a zombie summon, potentially. Uh, yep, looks like there was actually a deckhand summon there as well. So, uh, suddenly the Noble's in a bit of a pickle. I mean, granted, he can get healed by Teclis as well. And it does look like he's going to catch a regrowth just there. Meanwhile, in the back line, the uh, Reavers had come to try and... Maybe not bail out the bolt thrower crews. That's not really the right term because they were definitely dead. Um, but at the very least, try and do some damage to these scurvy dogs in return. And they were able to do so, certainly. We're going to keep the focus over here, though, as Harkon and these other high-value units are fighting. Teclis takes a risky charge, but then with the net of Amatok and the noble supporting, it's maybe not quite so risky. Likewise, Harkon's caught out without any support here. The spearmen can get, a, get some chips of damage in on him as well. So pretty good stuff so far. Reavers continuing to use up their ammo on zombies, and they've gotten some pretty good kill totals so far. Nothing too, too impactful, but they can also be used as melee units into this late game as well, so we'll see. Still anyone's game at this point, of course, with Harkon being so healthy. He does have the ability to very quickly goon any of these characters if he wants to, so looks like he's going to uh, turn and use his pistol, maybe. 
or his breath attacks to uh, potentially go after Teclis there. That Power Siphon, just continuously using that on Teclis to drain his Vigor and to keep him from being able to cast spells. Pretty strong. Um, but we'll see. Zombies are kind of crumbling in the late game a little bit here. There aren't too many numbers of zombies left to uh, fight. Ooh, looks like that Breath Attack came in, was targeted probably at one of those two characters, but actually ended up doing mostly damage to the Spearman, which uh, isn't the worst, but it's not probably what he wanted. <laughs> um... But, uh, yeah, very nice rear charge here from these Reavers. Going to get in, get a full surround on his fleet captain so that she can't escape. And then the characters come over to try and uh, do some damage to her to finish her off. Meanwhile, the Tiranoc Chariots just about picked up an XP Chevron. They are going to get uh, Horn Swaggled here. And, of course, because of the debuffs to their speed, especially, Harkon probably will be able to catch them here. We'll see. But, uh, yeah, they definitely have gotten some good damage done already. A nice little rear charge there on the Tide of Skilled. And they do rout in the face of Harkon. No surprises there. The Hounds will probably be able to come in and chase them off. Vampire player has been doing a great job of using the Hounds. Chase units off. The Sirens, unfortunately, though, kind of uh, were used to chase off some Reavers earlier. And, unfortunately, weren't really involved in this combat for quite a bit of time. So, just now, getting back into the field, they're going to be able to come terrify away these Spearmen that are kind of isolated here. Meanwhile, the elf characters all staying nice and tight here together. The handmaiden's going to use up the last of her ammunition shooting at uh, Harkon here. Of course, he's weak to fire damage on the Terror Geist because of that regeneration trait, so her shots will do a little bit extra. I mean, granted, he does have that 33% magic resistance, so actually, the shots will do a little bit less than they would otherwise, right? Because the magic resistance actually outweighs the weakness to fire there, so a little bit unfortunate, but still... Zombies grinding it out here, definitely getting ground down as well as the uh, pole arms start to disappear. I mean, obviously the pole arms will trade well with the Illyrian Reaver archers, but not much else. The pistol, though, is now being used on Teclis, and you can see why I said that him using the pistol earlier on the bolt throwers was a bit of a mistake. He needs more ammo in this late game to try and shoot Teclis and then, like, snipe him out very quickly. Or, at the very least, he should have done that earlier on in the battle. But now Teclis is pretty low. He's going to charge in here for a Flaming Sword of Ruin. And uh, Harkon, because of the charge situation here, actually pins him up against his own troops. And then Teclis can't escape, so a bit of a problem. That being said, the Noble comes in for a nice little rear attack here. The Handmaiden as well is also getting some nice shots, so... We'll see. A Teclis is going to probably go down here, or at the very least get routed off. But the uh, Sirens being mixed in here, taking the magic damage from the Flaming Sword of Ruin, was really impactful. You can see they basically lost out almost all of their HP just from that one spell fighting the Reavers. So that was pretty impactful, but Teclis does go down, so there's no more Flaming Sword of Ruin. And the balance of power is going to stay relatively even as the, uh, the two, you know, elf heroes will be able to kind of stabilize leadership a little bit here. But we'll see. Reaver's coming around for a nice rear charge. Pop that zombie. So then these guys can come over. But once Teclis goes, that is going to trigger terror routes on a number of different units. You can see uh, that Spearman got terrified. Those Reavers got routed off. And again, the Hound's being used excellently here to chase routing units off the field. Which is exactly what you need them to do. Unfortunately, he just doesn't really have enough in the late game here. As uh, many units are routed off, but then just quickly come back. Because, uh, you know, the terror doesn't last very long. But we'll see. Noble gets in here, gets some good attacks in on Harkon. The Handmaiden's also going to follow up. If we compare here, they have basically equivalent stats. I mean, obviously, uh, yeah, the Noble does have more armor and armor piercing. But, I mean, the Handmaiden's very, very equivalent in terms of both attack and defense. And weapon strength, total weapon strength, actually has better total weapon strength. So, yeah, good stuff. She's going to charge in here as the Noble takes a few more hits. It's probably going to finish him off. Yeah, he might get terrified away here. We'll see. He's really shaking in terms of his leadership, but the Handmaiden's holding just fine. The Sirenes are starting to crumble away, and once they're gone, that melee attack debuff that's affecting all of these elves will also be gone as well. And that, that melee attack debuff is pretty significant, uh, especially as many of these units no longer have their martial prowess, but that charmed minus nine melee attack, very impactful in this late game situation. But Harkon's able to get back up in the air there. The Hounds now are forced to more or less just charge into these Illyrian Reavers and uh, White Lions here. So not the greatest engagement for them. They're going to go ahead and pull away. But that does leave Harkon in here to finish the Noble. And the Noble is probably going to go down here. I know I said that before. But now he gets properly terrified away. And that is going to lead to a number of other units wanting to route as well when they see their, uh, their hero unit routing. So... Uh, that being said, we do have a few trusty spearmen here still fighting, and of course the Clutch Handmaiden. You guys who watch my channel frequently know I'm a huge fan of Handmaidens uh, for the High Elves. One of the most underrated characters in the game, in my opinion. 
Just the, the hybrid, they're probably one of the best hybrid melee missile units in the game, honestly. Because of that anti-large, really good melee defense, 64 melee defense for a, for a bow character is just absolutely insane. And the fact that she's got pretty decent charge bonus as well, 42 charge bonus. And again, that bonus versus large, very key in a late game situation like this against somebody like Luther Harkon. So he dives in, tries to terrify away these spearmen, and uh, with most of the zombies gone and the sirens finally gone, many of the high elves now have the ability to actually hold their leadership together and they're going to be getting some consistent hits so we'll fast forward a little bit as there's some kind of any hill action shenanigans as the hounds do finally chase off the reavers one final time unfortunately they themselves are crumbling so that whole time they're taking damage now we're going to get into the final engagement here as harkon drops down the hounds unfortunately aren't going to be able to stay into support and the handmaiden gets a few very clutch attacks here into the side of the big nasty vampire. You can see he's down at his healing cap, below 500 HP, hits critical army losses, and it will be victory for the High Elves. So a huge thank to Attic for sending that one in. Uh, you know, a couple mistakes on both sides, but honestly, very, very close battle at the end of the day. Uh, super clutch for that Handmaiden to pull out the victory there. And again, I'm just such huge fans of the Handmaiden. I do think that they could maybe buff their missile damage a little bit, perhaps, but in general, I think that they're just... A really, really solid hybrid unit and really underrated on the Elves roster. As for the general build here, I love the use of the Tiernock Chariots. The Reavers all did excellently. I mean, you would expect a lot of kill totals on pretty much everything, and that is the case. Um, but yeah, credit to HP here, staying relatively calm. I do think he made some mistakes with Harkon and using his ammo on the wrong targets. I mean, I get wanting to take out the bolt throwers as quickly as possible to try and save the rest of your army, but... Uh, the bloated corpse, you know, maybe could have been used a little bit better, but it, just blowing up one unit of white lions, white lions by itself was pretty cost-effective at the end of the day. Mortars ended up being a pretty rough pick, though, especially the fact that uh, he didn't really defend them properly with the pole arms, so they were able to just get picked off by the reavers there. And then the other, the other big mistake I would say was overchasing with the sirens. If they had been there in that melee fight for longer, just giving that extra terror, that extra melee attack debuff. Would have been a bit harder for Attic to hold his leadership together and to hold his uh, heroes kind of all in a safe spot where it was hard for Harkon to get at any of them individually. But uh, yeah, again, I just think maybe had he focused a little bit earlier on with Harkon on the heroes and then maybe played a little bit better with the Sirens, he could have pulled out a victory there. Of course, it was very, very close at the end, but yeah, uh, credit to uh, Attic for, for keeping his handmaiden alive and keeping her ready to fight Harkon in that clutch situation so very fun battle hopefully you guys enjoyed if you do like this sort of content be sure to like subscribe hit that bell notification button so every time i upload a new video you'll be notified thanks again for watching and we'll see you next time